Hey everyone, Captain Kimo here, and I'm going to show you how to shoot HDR using a Sony A7 camera. Now this should work with any Sony A7 series, so because um, the menus are all the same. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the camera. So here is the Sony A7, and we're going to be shooting this scene right here. And this is going to be perfect for HDR. So to get started shooting HDR, what you want to do first is make sure your dial is on the A and that is aperture priority. Now aperture priority will allow you to shoot and make sure that all your aperture and all three exposures remain the same. And you want that so that the depth of field will be the same on all three images. Next what you want to do is make sure your file is set to raw and you can do that by clicking on the menu and make sure that it's on RAW and not JPEG. RAW will give you the best files for producing your HDR images. Second, you hit the FN key and you want to select the drive mode which is bracketing. And right now it's on single, you don't want single because then you'd have to press the shutter button three times to get your three exposures and we don't want that. Let's go ahead and set it to continuous. So continuous bracketing, let's go ahead and set that will allow us to get three exposures by simply holding down the shutter button. So now we're set to shoot the HDR image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and focus and then hold down the shutter button and take all three exposures. And there you have it. We have all three exposures. So let's go ahead and show you the three exposures there. That is the overexposed image. This is the underexposed image. And we have the evenly exposed image. So let's go ahead and take those three exposures and we'll go into the computer and I'll show you the software that I use to create my HDR photos. So here we are on the computer, but before I get started, I just wanted to let you know I have a free 210 page ebook that you can download for free at my website at captainchemo.com. Now you can also use the link in the description below to get access to the ebook. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at our exposures. Right now I'm in Lightroom. You don't need Lightroom. Um, I'm just using it to uh, view the uh, photos. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the exposures real fast. And this is the uh, evenly exposed image. And here is the underexposed image. And we're going to use this because if you go to the, uh, the original um, exposure here, you can see there's a little bit of uh, color but not a lot. But with the uh, underexposed image, there's more color in the sky. And that's what we're going to use the... Uh, uh, the underexposed image for and then the overexposed image we're going to use this to fill in the color in the foreground whereas it's very dark here we will uh, use that to fill in the colors there so now what we're going to do is we're going to open the folder these three exposures are in and then we're going to let's go find the exposures here so this is the folder with exposures and we're going to use a program called Photomatix Pro and this is version 5.0 um, this is what I use for about 99% of my HDR images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that folder and then just simply select all three exposures and then drag and drop it into the, uh, the Photomatix window. So once we drag and drop it into the window, we'll get this little um, menu here. We'll just hit OK. And then we have our three exposures here in the next menu, which is loading, loading bracket photos. Just hit OK on that. And then we have the merged HDR options menu here. Um, we want to align source image on a tripod. Um, no, we'll, I'll, I'll check that off since uh, we took this photo using a tripod. Show options to remove ghost. Now, ghost is when something's moving in the exposures. Um, you can have Photomatix uh, remove it for you. Um, right now, as far as I know, there wasn't any movement, so we're going to check that off. And then we're going to use reduce noise um, so we can reduce the noise because when you create HDR images, it usually produces a lot of noise, and this will help to uh, reduce the noise. And I'll leave, I usually normally um, always leave this checked here, the reduce chromatic aberration. So with that all checked and done, we'll just hit the uh, merge the HDR photo. Once uh, Photomatix gets done doing its thing, merging the photos to get together, um, it, it'll take a few seconds uh, depending on how fast your computer is. Um, you'll get your HDR image, and this is just the uh, the default uh, preset here. If you go to the uh, right here, the top, this is the preset for um, the default. And in Photomatix, you have different options to creating your HDR image. Um, right here, uh, on the top uh, left here, you'll have methods. 
and this has a detail enhancer, contrast optimizer, and tone compressor. Uh, detail enhancer I use for more pop, for more creative images. Contrast optimizer, I use that more for um, realistic HDR images. So I'll just put that on real fast. And then the uh, tone compressor, that's uh, more for nicer, smoother looking images. Now. Um, we're going to use Detail Enhancer for this because I, I, I enjoy the results that I get from uh, Detail Enhancer. So we'll we'll start with Detail Enhancer. Or what you can do is you can just click down the uh, presets here. This is the uh, Contrast or Contrast Optimizer. And this is the uh, Tone Compressor. So let's go back to default and let's, let me show you real fast what the... Uh, regular uh, exposure looks like so I'll take the uh, the preview off here this is just the uh, regular image you can see how how dark it is in the foreground and by applying HDR we get uh, the full dynamic range in our photo so let's go ahead and play around with the uh, the the settings here we'll start with the default or what you can do is uh, this is what I like to do sometimes is just kinda go and play around with some of these other settings painterly 2 is a uh, is one of the go-to for me to start with so let's go with some of the other ones and I kinda like painterly 2 to start off with so we'll start off with painterly 2 now from what I can see I'm probably gonna wanna bring the strength down a little bit and what the strength does is it, it kinda plays with the light um, if I go all the way to the uh, left there you can see it looks more natural um, but then you lose a lot of detail in the foreground so what I'll do is I'll bring it to around 80 80 75 um, I like that um, now you can also play with the uh, the color saturation it makes the image darker but it gives it uh, a little more pop to the colors um, I like it there so that looks fine let's play with the tone compressor by bringing it down to the left and I kinda like it up and then detail contrast we can play with that I will bring it to about 5.7 and then just play around some of these other settings now lighting adjustment this plays a big role in uh, how how um, exaggerated your HDR can look so you can have the uh, light lighting effects checked or not checked when you have it not checked you get a slider instead and you can either go to the left or to the right. The left makes it a little more intense. Um, we'll go back to the lighting effects checked and then I'll use, let's see. So I kind of like it there, but I kind of like it there too because you get more of the uh, the foreground detail here. Um, so we'll leave it at that. Let's just play around with some more of this other stuff. I kind of want my image a little darker, so let's bring the white point down and then we'll we'll bring gamma down all the way to kind of darken up the image some and now we also have um, a chance to play with the temperature uh, we can either make it really cool or really warm and I prefer really cool for this photo so we'll do that and then micro adjustment um, this helps with the noise um, it makes the image a lot smoother so if I were to bring it to the right all the way you can see how smooth it's gotten but it also makes um, the image look a little less uh, less detailed so let's get kind of a a good medium point here and I, I kinda like it right in the middle um, it's brightened up the photo a little bit so what we're gonna end up doing is darkening up the photo so the rest of this I'm not gonna touch uh, but I will go ahead and uh, try to darken up the photo some and then play with the white point and I'm gonna play with the detail contrast to kind of alright so that actually looks pretty good so let's go back to the default so this was the default and then if I were to click this this will go back to the uh, what our settings were and this is kinda of what the HDR image will look like after you're you've done tone mapping so this is the original and this is the tone map image and this is detail enhancer let's go ahead and play with the uh, the other settings like the uh,
contrast optimizer. Now this looks a little more natural versus using um, the detailed enhancer. So let's go back to, to that and we'll play with that, the settings there. Um, what I like to do is go straight to the midtones first and just bring that up. And this will bring in all our colors here in the foreground. And then I will go ahead and play with the color temperature. Kind of bring the color up some. And notice it's making it warmer. So I'm going to bring it the color temperature to a cooler tone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to darken it some. So let's play with the tone compressor and the strength. Just kind of give it some more contrast. Um, we're going to bring the white point down a tad. Maybe bring up the black point and then bring down the mid-tone just some. Yeah, that looks that looks nice. And what this does is this produces a more a natural looking HDR image. And then the third option here is tone compressor. There's actually another option. It's more natural. It's uh, exposure fusion. If you click on that, you get exposure fusion. And I rarely use this. I only use it for a few um, a few photos. Uh, but mainly I use the uh, tone mapping and the detail enhancer. But with tone compressor, you can see it it's it's much more natural. I use this more for um, nighttime images, and I find it gives it better results or gives it a, at least a unique result. So let's play with this um, just to give you an idea of what it does. Um, you get a lack of dynamic range with tone compressor, but you get a more natural looking image. So that that's pretty much it with this. With uh, this particular photo, it's not, not really good to use tone compressor. Uh, preferably, uh, detail enhancer would be better. So I have a default I had already set up for this, is wetlands natural. So, and this is my preset for, for this particular photo. So um, that's that's pretty much it for uh, the quick overview on photomatics. Um, if you want to learn more, like I said, go to my website at captainchemo.com. Um, over there I have ebook available for you for free. Um, just sign up for my newsletter and uh, you'll get a link to download it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment and uh, hopefully I'll be able to reply soon. Um, until next time, this is uh, Captain Kimo signing out.